Hello everyone and welcome for this new episode. In this one I'm going to show you all the drawing tools that I use, maybe not all of them, but like a big part of the most important things that I use. So if you were wondering why I have pencils so sharp and how you can make them like these, uh, just stay tuned. Alright, so first let's start with one of the most precious things that I have in my studio which are my uh, collection of mirrors that you can see here. I have all, all sorts of mirrors and I like I'm I'm a kind of a maniac with this. I have one big here. I have a black mirror here, which uh, you can use an old phone if you want. This is a, a mirror that reflects things, but not as uh, intensively. So you see values much better. And I have another one here. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the pencils and some of the equipment that I use. But disclaimer, this video is not sponsored, so just pick whatever brand uh, you feel comfortable with and what do you have available, this is what I do. All right, so the first thing and one of the thing that I get asked the more often is um, why do I have like pencils with very sharp lead like this? The longer the tip, and the more control I have over pressure and angle. So I can put it very, very close to the surface of the paper, almost horizontally, and just be very, very gentle. And it's going to create some very, very, very soft values. Whereas with this, as you can see, if I want to put it almost horizontal, I can't. See, uh, the, the lead is not touching the paper because of this angle right here. Uh, so the the more angle, the most angle that I have is this. And as you can see, I, I don't have the same level of precision. Uh, and immediately it shows you can also use like, like they sell the leads, and you can put it in the lead holder and it works. So for that, if you want to do that, you just have to sharpen it with um, a little box cover like this. All right, so once you have a long lead like this, now what you want to do, don't worry, it's not necessarily going to break unless you press really hard. And plus the fact that like, if you worry that it's going to break, uh, maybe your uh, pressure needs to be more um, under control, right? So this is, uh, this is something that can really improve your drawing game. And once you have this, this long lead, you want to sharpen it with just a simple piece of sandpaper that I stapled to um, a little wooden block like this. And just any type of sandpaper will do. And you can also use different types of grain. I use fine grain. I don't know, I, I think it's 120 sandpaper. Works really well. And just like that, you sharpen to have a nice sharp lead. And there you go, you have a long pencil like this with a lot of control to create these very, very subtle value transitions and make sure that um, you get the, the precise values and you can be very, very subtle with everything you do and you have a lot of control. And yeah, having this long lead like this is really helpful for the values, for the transitions to create something soft. All right, so now let's see some uh, erasers. So a needed eraser is absolutely necessary, not only for erasing actually, but also for drawing because you can shape it into a point and with this shape you can actually uh, use it as a, a negative pencil you remove instead of uh, instead of putting more graphite on the paper 
Um, so have it in several like little pieces like this so that it doesn't get too warm because once it gets too warm it's not uh, very uh, useful. Like a normal eraser it's really for actual erasing and uh, th these things also mechanical erasers uh, very useful uh, when you need some type of precision because these doesn't go in, in the detailed areas. Now one major thing that I use very often is a pencil holder and this is a very very nice because well as I said I like to have a lot of control and the longer it is the more control you have because if I hold it like this I don't have a lot of control over the pressure and if I hold it like this I can have a lot more variety in the pressure. So um, this is a very important thing you never really want to have a pencil that's way too short. So these pencil holders very simple you can find them everywhere they are very useful. I also really like to use these drawing compass they are very useful to measure if you need to measure the proportions of the head let's say a really cool and very helpful uh, tool to have. To protect sometimes to protect for not like smudging and erasing with your hand. Um, you can use these gloves. You just have to cut uh, one, like the, the three fingers, the thumb and the, the, the other two fingers. So you have a good grip and you can put your hand on the paper uh, without making a mess. So it's quite useful. Or if you want, you can use a mole stick. It's just a simple stick. It's when you're uh, working in a vertical position and uh, this uh, avoids to have to touch the paper. A very important tool as well is a plumb line. So I talked about it. Just take some thread, a little weight and uh, you're good to go. You have a plumb line. Very very useful and essential tool if you want to learn how to draw. Now in terms of colored uh, pencils I use a little bit of everything uh, but I do like for Sengin these uh, these pencils you can try different brands I actually have no preference actually depends on the type of paper that I use some some pencils react better to some paper but for everything like chalk related I'm not using chalks or pastel I always use them in the in the pencil shape um, it, I think it's uh, it's it, it works better uh, I like to use white let's say for for uh, working on toned paper using white can be very helpful but you can also use like something that's white but looks more like some type of skin tone if you want to create effects that can also be a, an option as far as charcoal go um, try to find charcoal without a hole in the middle and try to find uh, charcoal that's uh, just one single bit of, uh, of burnt wood uh, you also have uh, compressed charcoal which is something that I use not very often but sometimes. As far as blending goes I generally have this technique I fold a piece of uh, paper towel to create uh, a little point like this and with this you can blend really cost almost nothing um, but most of the time I don't use this I use um, sometimes a little an old brush to just uh, get rid of the texture most of the time is to get rid of unpleasant texture or like you know bits of graphite um, a big brush can help also to cover a big area and remove all the unwanted unwanted texture um, and you have these little um, little silicone brushes that can also be very helpful if you uh, want to uh, be more precise but not use your finger. It's basically like a, a little finger that presses and kind of has the same type of texture but it's not greasy like a finger and you can also use a little skewer like this. Alright so that's it for this uh, video it's just a quick tour of some of the things that I use m the most often 
of course, this is not all my stuff. I didn't talk about the paper. But um, yeah, I hope this was uh, instructional. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. If you want to uh, see more, you can join on Patreon and have exclusive content uh, posted regularly. If you want to find resources for drawing, you can go to my website and follow the link, uh, resources for artists, and you will find a lot of resources to draw. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you for the next one. Have fun drawing and take care. Bye.